Hi, this is the Monday Evening Tropical Tidbit on Hurricane Michael. Remember, if you're looking for information specific to your location, uh, consult the National Weather Service in your local area and your county emergency management officials for information specific to where you are. We're watching Hurricane Michael, a strengthening storm that has intensified considerably since yesterday. This is now a hurricane, winds likely near 85 miles per hour or so, just northwest of the western tip of Cuba. This is a much more organized looking storm than it was yesterday. Uh, yesterday it was a more elliptically shaped, loose circulation. Today it is much more circular with more symmetric convection firing on all sides of the center throughout the day today. A new recon plane just entered the storm and uh, we can see that the center was found on the southeast side of this new convective burst outlined here in white and we had very strong winds uh, probably going to be increased on the next advisory due to this data probably around 85 mile per hour maximum winds found on this northern side and uh, very strong winds on the southern side as well indicating that this core is beginning to become more symmetric now we haven't had convection develop all the way around the center yet uh, but microwave data shows that a curved band structure associated with that convective burst on the northern side is trying to form uh, the beginnings of a partial eye wall and the band on the south side may try to connect to this as well and try to close this off at at some point. Uh, that's what we always watch for is that formation of an inner core where we get a closed eye wall to form and once that happens these things can really get strong uh, but despite not having a closed eye wall yet Michael is intensifying uh, at a rather quick pace throughout the day today and the recon data here shows that the central pressure may be below 970 millibars indicating a very fast pace of intensification as the storm enters the Gulf tonight. And this is likely to continue uh, as the system moves north. If we look at the water vapor imagery uh, tonight, uh, we'll see that the upper level trough we spoke about the, over the last couple of days that has been over the Gulf of Mexico is indeed retreating northward uh, inland over the continent now and moving out of the way of Michael. And you can now see that cirrus clouds are beginning to expand away from the storm instead of toward it. The last couple of days we had cirrus clouds doing this, coming right toward and across the center of the storm circulation. We now see some more expansion in the opposite direction, indicating that shear has lightened compared to the last couple of days. And uh, we now see the storm in the location we wanted to see it in, in terms of starting to answer some questions. With Michael now here, uh, we can now see that the storm has demonstrated the ability to start the process of forming an inner core with convection on all sides. It was questionable whether or not it would be able to fight the shear sufficiently to obtain the symmetric structure uh, in the inner core. It has demonstrated the ability to do that, and since shear is unlikely to change significantly between here and the landfall point later, this means Michael is likely to continue being able to strengthen and indeed this is expected to become a major hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico with winds expected to attain uh, a maximum value of about 120 miles per hour right now by the National Hurricane Center prior to landfall and this is going to be one of those rare Gulf Coast hurricanes that uh, may be intensifying or reaching peak intensity at the time of landfall so this is going to be a major event along the Gulf Coast uh, with all phases of hazards possible from storm surge primarily uh, along this area of the uh, Florida Gulf Coast which is especially prone to surge especially in Appalachie Bay uh, to wind uh, near the landfall point and heavy rainfall that could cause inland flooding uh, and uh, all the power outages that come with the large wind field. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing uh, the general motion toward the north-northwest over the next couple of days, ending up near the coast sometime on Wednesday afternoon, but there's still some uncertainty on this. One thing that has changed today is that models have become uh, a little bit closer in agreement on the track of Michael because uh, some of the slower models, such as the European, have uh, changed their tune a little bit today to become a little bit faster, uh, like the GFS and some other models. Uh, the European tonight at 8 p.m. originally had the storm a little bit farther south than it currently is. The actual position is a little bit farther north and it doesn't look like much, uh, but it's enough that the storm is now moving faster on the European model and therefore comes a little bit farther west into Florida compared to prior runs. Uh, this is bringing the consensus a little bit more toward the Panama City and Destin area, uh, but this could of course change, but the official forecast is right there into the Emerald Coast and that's where the consensus for the landfall point currently 
currently is. However, uh, shifts to the left or the right could still occur. We'll be watching very carefully to see exactly how fast Michael begins to move across the Gulf as again, a slower storm as we've talked about before will tend to deviate a little bit more toward the right. And the reason for that is this large trough coming across the western uh, uh, plains here is going to eventually erode this large ridge over the eastern US. Right now there's this area of mid-level high pressure and that is helping to direct the storm north northwestward and then into the coast. Uh, but this ridge will erode as this trough begins to move westward and push that ridge out of the way and weaken it. And the longer that Michael waits, uh, the more time that ridge has to erode, at which point uh, it will allow the hurricane to turn more toward the northeast. And so if Michael is a little bit slower, we could have a landfall more toward the east instead of a little bit farther west. So little details here. Uh, the, the bottom line is we're never going to be able to pin down the exact landfall point of a, hurric of a hurricane a couple of days in advance. It's just not something that you can really do. So deviations a couple dozen miles left or right are of course possible. The bottom line is if you're in the hurricane warning area here from the Alabama, Florida border down to the Big Bend area, you got to be ready for this, uh, including strong surge uh, even well east of the center because the strong onshore flow on this side of the circulation extends for a couple hundred miles to the east of the eye that's forming. And so this is going to push water on shore, even if you do not get a direct hit from the eye. And we can see a look at some of the surge here forecast. This is the potential storm surge inundation map. This is a, a uh, reasonable maximum storm surge inundation above normally dry ground that can occur. Red colors here indicate over nine feet of surge possible. And you can see how far southeast of the forecast track, we still have significant surge values along this part of the Gulf Coast. Very vulnerable to surge here. So this is a, a big deal. If you have an evacuation order from your county, do heed it and get out of the way of the life-threatening surge. As for the rest of the forecast, this will continue uh, inland across Georgia and into the Carolinas, where unfortunately areas that were affected by Florence may receive some rainfall and high winds uh, that could uh, potentially cause uh, flooding and power outage problems, uh, depending on how much of the storm is left by the time it gets to that point. Uh, heavy rain may also occur and bring flash flooding to points near and east of landfall, uh, where 6 to 10 inches of rain may occur. And don't forget that power outages will occur well inland, although the storm will weaken max winds near 120 miles per hour at the point of landfall. Those winds will fall off inland, uh, but it doesn't take hurricane force winds to cause power outages for a long period of time. Tropical storm force winds will do. Uh, so a large area uh, affected by the hurricane track well inland will also see severe impacts from this storm. So get prepared, pay attention to your emergency management officials in your local county and your National Weather Service for the latest information for your uh, area. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.